Hi, well, welcome again to these uh, tutorials from markplex.com. And uh, today I thought I'd spend a little bit of time just going through tutorial 13, uh, which is one of the tutorials. Uh, and this one in particular explains uh, a method of creating uh, resistance and support levels using previous pivot points. And uh, what I'm going to do is just explain the program that is included in tutorial 13 at markplex.com. So to start with, let's just have a look at the actual, what a chart looks like when the indicator is applied to it. And you can see here these gray lines representing support and resistance lines. And what happens is the program looks for a pivot, for example, here. And then as it goes along, if there is another pivot, either a low pivot or a high pivot that is within a certain, uh, for example, these one, these uh, fellas here, that is within a certain tolerance of the initial one, then what it does, it will increase the size of the line. And uh, if a new pivot is formed that is not uh, within a certain distance of that, then uh, a new line starts to be created. So let me uh, just go and show you the actual program and then we'll start talking about the actual pivot. So here is uh, here is the program and this should be exactly the same as the one that I've included in tutorial 13. I'm just going to get rid of that bar there and we can just see a little bit more of it. So we'll just focus in on some of the pertinent things. Now one of those is the use of the pivot function and there are several pivot functions in TradeStation Easy Language. This is the one I like to use which is the uh, the pivot function and what I'm doing is looking for a, a low pivot and looking for a high pivot. So let's just go and examine what a pivot is and how this function works. So I've got a little presentation here and uh, essentially a pivot is in this particular case here the high of this is greater than the high of this and the high of this and the and the high of this and and it is also higher than the high of this this and this now the number of bars that we have to include to qualify as a pivot really depends on the uh, the parameters to the the pivot function that we use and if we go to the next slide we'll see a pivot function here looking to find high pivots and uh, you'll see a number of um, values being fed into this and let's just go through each one the first one this is the value being looked at. So for example, in the uh, image I just showed you, we were looking for high pivots. If you were looking for low pivots, then you would probably put that as a as a low, L. You could also be look for pivots of openings or pivots of closes, or even some sort of calculation like high plus low divided by two. So it doesn't have to be H, but that's what we're using here. Now the next number here, 25, this is the number of look back bars and what it is saying is in order to find a pivot how many bars are we going to look back from where we are at this present time and uh, what the function will do is if it finds a pivot then it will return from the value of pivot a value of one if it doesn't find one it'll return minus one the next number here is the left strength and this is what I was just saying a moment ago that we had to have three bars uh, less than the pivot for it to qualify as a pivot to the left of that pivot. The number two means we've got to have uh, a right strength, which means that we've got to have two bars to the right of the pivot that are less than the pivot. Uh, it could be three, could be one, could be could be four or five or six. That's uh, entirely up to you. Of course, the bigger that number uh, means that you you're not going to know it's a pivot until you've at least got that many bars beyond the pivot so there is a little disadvantage in having the right strength too too great now the next one is the the instance so for example if we were looking back 25 bars it could be that we would actually find say three pivots within those 25 bars the next number here this is telling us the instance so if we wanted to find the most recent we would set that to one if we wanted to find the next most recent, number two. If we wanted to find the uh, the third most recent, that would be three, and so on. 
The next number, this is, uh, this is an important one, well they're all important, but this one is telling us whether we're looking for high pivots, in which case we set that to be 1, or low pivots, in which case we set that to minus 1. So a high, or rather a low pivot would be something that looked a little bit like a V, a high pivot would be like a V upside down. Now the next two are actually not inputs to this function, they are the values that are returned by the function. O pivot price 1, that is the the value of the pivot, and O pivot bar 1 is the number of bars ago that that pivot occurred. So if we had a right strength of 2, the very minimum that that could be uh, would be uh, 2 bars. And then, as I as I mentioned previously, that the function actually re returns one for pivot found and minus one for pivot not found. Okay, so I just created a very simple little show me study just to demonstrate what I was just talking about. And uh, if you look at the uh, the screen, you'll see we have inputs: left strength, right strength. If you recall, the left strength is the number of bars to the left of the pivot that need to be, in the case of a high pivot, less than uh, the pivot, and the right strength, the number of bars to the right of the pivot that need to be left less than it. Um, for it to constitute as a high pivot. Variables, we've got O pivot price H and O pivot bar H. They are variables that are going to uh, return the values from the function and then the length, if you recall, is just how far back we're going to look. So the first thing we're going to do in this program is just set the length to be equal to the right strength plus one. And this is just going to ensure that we don't keep finding the same pivot over and over again. Um, we're now going to evaluate the function and what this does is we're going to put in high because we're looking for high pivots the length which we've just set here left strength right strength this uh, this first number if you recall just go back to the uh, presentation you'll see that that represents the instance in other words number one means the most recent pivot and then the next one one means we're looking for high pivots and then we've got the two values that we're going to be returned O pivot price H and O pivot bar H so uh, what we're going to do with the show me is if a pivot has occurred in other words this function is returning one in other words value four equals one and the, uh, the the bar ago that the pivot occurred is equal to the right strength then what we're going to do is plot a dot on the high. Now this may not occur exactly as you think so let's just go and have a look at the chart and having applied this and I've applied it to the same chart as the uh, as the resistance and support lines that we were talking about. And let's just zoom in and have a look at um, this particular dot here. Okay so I've zoomed in and uh, we can see here that uh, well let's just uh, let's just zoom out again I'm just going to go uh, format and uh, find the uh, chart analysis tools and uh, just going to zoom out. So you can see here that this is a pivot and you can see that uh, indeed the, this bar, high of this bar is less than the pivot, high of this bar is less than the high of this bar is less. Now if you if we zoom in again we'll see that uh, indeed this high and this high are less than the pivot so what we've done is we've drawn a dot here now this is the soonest we know about the pivot the pivot is actually here so this show me that I've created here is not uh, producing the uh, the dot on the actual pivot it's drawing the dot at the first point that we know that the pivot has occurred so anyway um, that is a, a brief introduction to uh, finding pivots and uh, if you do look at the uh, support and resistance tutorial you'll notice that one of the very first things that we do is uh, in writing the program is create is to evaluate each bar in turn to see if a pivot has occurred and in this case we're looking at both low and high pivots so that is uh, all I'm going to cover so far in this video uh, I will most probably do uh, further videos just to explain some other aspects of tutorial 13 which includes a demonstration on how to use uh, a an array to store the pivot information and then how to find if one pivot is uh, within a combined value distance of another in which case we make the uh, the pivot line or rather the uh, support resistance line a little fatter anyway I hope you find that useful remember uh, go to markplex.com and uh, see several free tutorials there